Hi, a huge welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Now, for those of you that are at all squeamish about meat, particularly in this episode, we're gonna be dealing with a pig's head. I really would appreciate it if you don't watch this video now. I know there are people out there that are fascinated by the whole production of food like myself i'm very interested in cuts of meat that are a little bit unusual but if you're not interested the warning is there please don't watch this and get upset um, i'd rather you just turn off now and watch another video at a later date and for those that are fascinated by the production of meat meet my friend here the pig's head now this is a wonderful cut it's inexpensive but uh, i'm the one over here by the way not this one this is a wonderful cut of meat. It's often neglected, very inexpensive. And I've got a couple of pig's heads. I'm gonna do two recipes today on the channel. Uh, one of them's going up right now, one of them a little bit later on. We're gonna be making brawn. I think the Americans call that head cheese. We are going to be making one of my favorite cured meats. Uh, a guanciale, which is a, like a pancetta, comes from the pig's cheek, this section of meat here. I'm gonna show you how to prepare that, how to cure it, Come on, let's get going, I'll show you how. Now when you decide that you're going to take the life of an animal, it's best to respect the whole animal and use it. So come down here now, have a look at the pig's head. Uh, the guanciale comes from the pig's cheek. There is a lot of meat here on the side of the cheek and my butcher's been a little overzealous. He's cut up the side, but it does let me open here and show you the jawbone that runs under here and there's a lot of meat on there. We want to get that off. So the cut, you want a, a good sharp knife and it's important that you use a steel and keep your knife very sharp. Um, we're going to cut from just under the ear here and go down until you touch the bone. You can see just in there now, if I start to draw the knife in sharp, eventually I'm going to get down to the cheekbone and I can use the knife then to guide along the edge of the bone and we get as close to the bone as possible as we pull this meat away. You can see there, that is the cheekbone and drawing the knife along the edge. Now be careful with your fingers Continue to draw this meat down and across the edge of the cheek and eventually you're going to end up with this wonderful piece of cheek meat. Now that is the piece of meat we're going to be using to produce our guanciale. It's a very fatty, very flavoursome cut of pork. Come back in a moment, I'll do the other side and I'll show you what we do with this. So I've got two pig's cheeks here, which we're going to make into a wonderful guanciale. Trust me, this is gonna taste fantastic. The pig's head itself, don't waste this. We can turn this into a wonderful stock or a brawn. And I've got a video on my channel showing you how to make a brawn. So now we've got our pig's cheeks prepared, we're going to cure them. And what that means is there's a lot of moisture in the meat. Uh, we're gonna be using salts and sugars. We're gonna draw those moistures out. Now come and have a look just how beautiful this cut of meat is, but it's way too wet. So over here, I've got a bowl. I'm gonna put half a cup of salt into there. Also, I've got half a cup of sugar. Now I've got some black peppercorns, about 15 or so black peppercorns. I'm just gonna crush these ones up. Going to add the black peppercorns in there as well. Now, this is optional. I'm using half a teaspoon of salt, Peter. You don't have to. I'm not gonna sit and discuss with you whether you should or shouldn't. I do, it's up to you. Half a teaspoon of salt, Peter. Some fresh thyme from the garden. Now I'm gonna put four or five sprigs, just gonna draw the leaves off of there and pop them in the mixture as well. Now you'll see I've got some thyme sprigs in there as well. We're not worried about that. Let's just give this a good mix through. This is our cure. Now I'm just gonna clear a little bit of space. This is my brining tub. It does have to either be stoneware or plastic. Um, I'm going to take the pig's cheeks now. I'm going to lay them in here just on the bottom. I'm going to take some of my salt and sugar rub, sprinkle it over the top of the pig's cheeks and I'm going to push it into every little crevice. If there's any gaps in there, we're just going to push the salt inside, any little holes. We want to completely coat the meat in this salt and sugar solution. I'm going to turn them over now so they're skin side up. I want to put the rest of my salt and sugar on there and completely cover, really massage the salts and sugars into the flesh. This is going to draw a lot of liquid out. Now I'm going to take some more time fresh from the garden 
I'm just going to take these now and lay them across the top of the meat, put some underneath. I want the thyme flavor to get in there completely. So my pig's cheeks now are covered in my cure. Now you want to cover this over now, whether you use a foil wrap or a cling wrap. I've actually got a lid for this one. Pop that on there. That is going to stay in the brine for five days. I'm gonna pop it in the fridge and you'll see a lot of liquid come off. Now you can turn it every day or so if you like. In five days time, we're gonna take this out of here and I'll show you the next stage. Now my pig's cheeks have been in the brine for a couple of days and you can see all the moisture that's been drawn off. It's a good idea every now and again, you can feel that's getting stiff already, to turn the meat over. Then I'm gonna pop that back in the fridge. Now don't forget, five days and this will be fully cured. Then we're gonna take it out and air dry it. Now my guanciale has finished curing. It's been five days, a little over five days actually, in the fridge and it smells it smells as fresh, take a look at that, as fresh as the day I put it in there. But all the juices have come out now, and what we're going to do is lift one of those out. Now, here's a quick quiz for you. This is guanciale, it's an Italian recipe. There is an English recipe very similar to this, so if you know what it is, it's not exactly the same, completely different name, comment down below. Okay, the pig's cheek now. We're gonna bring it out onto a board. It's a little stiff now, you can feel it. And on the top corner here, I'm just going to take my knife, which is nice and sterile. I'm just gonna pop a hole through the cheek like that. I'm then going to take some food grade string or butcher's string. Just gonna cut about a foot or so off. I'm gonna pop the string using the knife through the meat. And then what we're going to be doing, just gonna do old fashioned reef knot. So you've got a nice secure knot there. Now we are gonna find a place to hang this to finish its curing. And it's gonna drip for at least a few days, so put a little tray underneath there. Keep it away from the flies, not too damp. Uh, sometimes you might want to put a net over it. We're gonna leave it hanging for about three weeks. Now it will be definitely ready. Don't take any of these herbs off there. They're gonna enhance more flavor. So I'm gonna hang these up. I've got a little place in the back of the house there and I will see you here in three weeks time and we're gonna try this wonderful homemade guanciale. So three weeks later on, I'm here again and this is an exciting time for me because look, the guanciale has been hanging. It's completely cured. The smell is fresh. There's nothing bad, a little blush of salt coming out there. This is ready to use. This is a young guanciale. It's great to go into different pasta dishes. Uh, particularly, I'm gonna be doing a carbonara on my uh, channel very shortly, so you'll get to see this being used. But I will actually cut a little bit. Look, we've got two here. They're absolutely gorgeous. I will slice a little bit off now just to show you what that looks like. It is very fatty, but don't worry about that. So you'll see over here, I've cut myself a couple of strips of this. Now I would cut this up into some little lardons, little squares or strips. And then we're just going to take those little slivers of guanciale, pop it into a hot pan. Probably doesn't need any oil, but if you want, you can add a tiny little bit of a dribble of oil in there. I would just fry these up until they're beautiful and crisp and then let's try some. Now look, I've just fried those up until they're beautiful and brown like that. I know this is a very fatty meat, but trust me, I'm just gonna take those out of there now. Absolutely trust me on this one. The flavor coming from this guanciale is something you've possibly never tried before. It is so rich, probably a little bit hot there, but oh, let me let this cool down a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna go for a piece. It is hot, but here goes. Oh, you know, this is heavenly, and this is why this is why we make our own guanciale. Oh, if you can get it in the shops, I'm sure it's going to taste good. This is fantastic. Imagine this in a carbonara. It's going to be great, so stay tuned. Uh, I hope you're trying this at home. If I could give you a piece of this now, you will tell me that is the best bacon that you have ever tried. It's delicious. Be good, share the love, give this one the thumbs up. I hope you've enjoyed this unusual series of looking at meats. I'll be doing more of it on the channel. Take care, see you next time. Oh.
So I've got this wonderful, or oh, I've got two cuts of guanciale here, which is not gonna last too long in my house. This is gonna make such good food. I hope you've enjoyed this little look into curing pig's cheeks. Take care. I'll leave some links to some other videos here. Be good. See you next time.